Brace yourself. Immersion is one of those buzzwords often used in contemporary gaming culture. It's defined by Merriam-Webster as complete involvement in some activity or interest. And as open-ended as that definition might sound, to gamers, it's a potent term. Immersion can be created in many different ways, a perspective that offers a detail-rich view, a massive open world brimming with player choice, a relatable and intimate setting. These all can create immersion. But out of all the sources of immersion, there's one that stands above the rest. This. The controller is our gateway, the physical bridge between us and the game world. The reason is that what we do with the controller ultimately affects what happens in the game. Control is the foundation of immersion, because the second that we realize that we're using a controller to do things in-game, a conscious barrier is created, and immersion is broken. Immersion is fully realized when what we do with the controller, and what happens in the game, is so tightly knit that we forget that there's a controller at all. This is what I believe to be something that's kept many newcomers from coming into gaming. Controllers are now more complex than ever, with buttons, triggers, and joysticks out the hooskow. It's what made the Wii Remote and touchscreen mobile phones so important to bringing more people into gaming. Sure, their games are rarely something substantial in content or depth, but their simplistic and generally responsive interface are maximum uses of minimalist design. Of course, games that do control so well are heavily dependent on the player, but there's a general consensus that responsiveness is a key element. When you jump in a game, you should jump right when your thumb hits the button. Better yet, being able to control your movement mid-air is often recognized as a positive quality. You're given command of what you do in-game. You are, by definition, in control. Now I could do something pretentious and call this phenomenon in game design something like... Tactile Aesthetic Maximization. But I'm just gonna cut the crap and I'm gonna call it... Well... Good Control. And I'm going to analyze this further by taking a look at what I believe is one of the best controlling games I've ever played. The Dishwasher Vampire Smile by Ska Studios for the Xbox 360. Now I know I've talked about this game a lot, in fact it was the game I chose for the pilot of my very first video series. Honestly I could gush about this all day, and if you see my Twitter you know I do. But upon a more cognitive look at the game I realized that it's an enormous example of how to do game control right. Developed by Ska Studios and released exclusively for the 360 in 2011, the Dishwasher Vampire Smile is a 2D beat-em-up drenched in goth, gritty atmosphere. It's so brutal and fast-paced that I believe it's not really a beat-em-up, but a character action game in two dimensions. It very much rivals the fluidity and pace of series like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta. It's not so much about style per se, but more about momentum. There really isn't any style meter, so there's nothing stopping you from reusing certain moves, but eventually, your gameplay becomes a bloody, brutal ballet of destruction. Without question, Vampire Smile's controls are fluid. Undeniably. These moves chain together seamlessly thanks in part to a forgiving lock-on for attacks and grabs. There's a rather large range when attacking, and I found myself moving in very slightly in order to keep my combos going. The game's steadily pushing me towards targets. Chaining melee moves with grabs and even firearm attacks is incredible to do, and I never felt like my moves had a break in flow, regardless of intensity. But the fluidity isn't limited to the offense, it's the defense that makes things at peak fluidity. Your main defensive mechanic is a dodge conveniently mapped to the right analog stick. Tilting the analog stick in a specific direction has you dodge in that direction. Tilt it right, you dodge right, etc. This dodge mechanic can be used consecutively without depletion of a meter or the like, so the only thing keeping you from dodging is the inability to attack while doing so. You're constantly balancing between offense and defense, and when in motion, the fluidity is unbelievable. Ultimately, the Dishwasher Vampire Smile's momentum is heightened by the responsiveness of the controls and generosity of the attack range. This keeps combos going, all at the push of the buttons. But that's tier one of why I believe the Dishwasher Vampire Smile is such a paramount of game control. The reason I say Tier 1 is because responsive game control doesn't necessarily mean good game control. Any game can have fluid responsive inputs, but the next step that's required is complementing that responsiveness with quality game design. The Dishwasher Vampire Smile's design is where you really see how its control is so good. 
The things you do in game are immediate for sure, but unless your game is built around these controls, you'll ultimately have just a good game, not a great one. The first design choice that Scott Studios really nailed with this is the perspective. Character action games were pioneered in the third dimension. The creation of verticality and a controllable camera opened up more doors for beat-em-ups to traverse through, leading to the creation of what is arguably the beginning of character action games, Hideki Kamiya's Devil May Cry. Additional games in the genre like Bayonetta furthered this fluidity and flair with technological improvements, giving more weapons and moves to attack enemies. However, controllable camera has ultimately given these games an immersion disadvantage, as a clumsy camera angle is a very easy way to frustrate the player and dismantle the immersive framework. A bad camera angle takes the player out of the flow, leading to an instant break in immersion. But without a camera to control and only two dimensions to contend with, Vampire Smile simplifies its perspective, leading to much less management on the player's part. It trims the fat and focuses entirely on the two perspectives in tow. When combined with the 2D dodge mechanic, this gives the player enormous handling and total control over how they move in relation with their own visual perspective. It's a superb example of simplification for maximum effect. But the part of Vampire Smile's design that I think epitomizes its place as one of the best controlled games I've ever played is its pacing. Or more specifically, its difficulty. It's no obscure fact that character action games are pretty difficult. Devil May Cry 3 Dante's Awakening on the PS2 is still one of the toughest games I've ever played, but the steep difficulty encouraged me to step up my game and associate myself with how I was playing. A game with good control is one that maximizes the immersion of the player, so the top priority is to make the player's actions intuitive. It wants the player to forget, even for a moment, that they're even using a controller to do the things on screen. A steep difficulty is a very good way to close that gap and give the player full synergy with what they do on screen. The dishwasher vampire smile is demanding. It requires the player to think on their feet, move quickly and fluidly, and react with pitch-perfect precision. A tough difficulty accelerates that immersion rate, making the player learn the ropes quicker and tighten the bolts faster. But the game can't go too extreme either. A game that is too difficult leads to frustration, giving the player a sense of broken confidence in the idea that their skills and actions aren't meaningful to the game's operation. If the game is too difficult, it feels cheap and unfair, like the player's moves aren't affecting the outcome. That removes agency, and yes, control for the player. A game that truly maximizes that control is a game that finds that balance, a game with fluid, accessible controls, but a design that pushes the player just enough so that they learn the ropes faster. Once that rate is set, the acceleration can start. The player can forget the controller entirely and become synergized with their character's moves on screen. The Dishwasher Vampire Smile does this splendidly. It removes whatever unnecessary inconveniences are available and amplifies the impact of its fluid controls with a healthy game design. It wants the player to have command over what they do and feel good about their skills. It's that perfect cocktail of simple and complex that just makes playing the game feel good. Of course, I won't say that every game should be exactly like Vampire Smile. There are so many genres and subgenres that finding a single formula for good control is ridiculous. But I think Scott Studios did something very incredible, finding a solid balance between demand and accommodation resulting in one of the best controlling games I've ever played. So what do you think are some games that are art of control? What do they do that makes it so important? Leave your examples in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Take care. Everybody, thank you for watching my video on the Dishwasher Vampire Smile Immersion in the Art of Control. If you liked it, remember to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate any support that you can provide. My social media stuff is at the bottom. You can follow me on Twitter and check me out on Tumblr. Also, there are some links right there in the middle of the screen. There's my last episode of Vigi Games on Cameo Elements of Power. And there is also a link to my friend Matt What to Fuck's Let's Play channel where him and I play various PC and console games. Thanks again for watching, folks, and have a good night.